Hello, my creative friends. That's right, I called you creative. I called you that because, well, that's what you are. Usually we think of creativity as painting or writing or singing, and that's true. We can definitely be creative through art, but there's much more to creativity than just paint or music. We'll talk about that a little more in just a moment. Let's start our time out together in prayer. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for giving us an imagination and different gifts and abilities to use our imagination. Thank you for what you want to teach us today from your word, the Bible. Help us to understand more about you and help us to be drawn closer to you. We want to know you. We want to know truth. We want to understand your word more. We ask in your name. Amen. So I said you're creative. Let's talk about the word creativity. Do you remember what it means? Creativity. Imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. You see, God's creativity is indescribable. That's right. It's limitless. Limitless like our background of a sky. There's no limit to the sky. It goes beyond what we could ever imagine. So if we're made in God's image, then we are creative. So this week, talking about creativity, we did a little side area about all things art. You notice my station right here? I have some paint and some canvases. I have some scissors and Play-Doh and crayons, things that you can use when you're being creative through art. Well, speaking of creative, let's play a game that will show just a little bit about what I mean. Let's play a game called Creative Charades. So for our game, Creative Charades, Miss Hannah and Miss Rachel are gonna come use their creativity to act out some phrases. Ladies, will you join me? You get to guess what they're acting out and type your guesses in the comment box. So let's talk a little bit about the game. As you can see on our poster board, we have two rows of post-it notes. The top row in the yellow are all nouns. Nouns means a person, place, or thing. The bottom row of blue post-it notes, those are the verbs. In this case, it means action words. So what will happen is Miss Hannah and Miss Rachel will take turns. When Miss Hannah starts the game, she'll take one yellow post-it note, a noun, one blue post-it note, a verb, read them, and then she'll act it out. Miss Rachel will try to guess what she's acting out, and then they'll swap places. Now remember, you're also guessing. So the whole time that Miss Hannah or Miss Rachel's acting out and guessing, you're guessing right along with them and typing your guesses in the comment box. One thing, you cannot use your words, but you can use sound effects. Oh. <laughs> so let's say that in the paper it is dog, which is the noun, barking, which is the verb. You can bark. <laughs> you can bark but you can't say the word dog. Now, you might get an idea that one of the cards might say ice cream and one of the others says melting, but you probably aren't gonna pull ice cream melting. You might pull something that says dog melting. So you have to figure out how to <laughs> act that out. You have to be creative, okay? Any questions? No. Okay, <laughs> all right, are you ready? Okay, here we go. This is round number one. Miss Hannah, go ahead and pull your two post-it notes. And after you read them, you can put them right behind you on the table. And you ready, set, go. Miss Rachel, what do you think it is? Is it a bird <laughs> tweeting? Whistling? A bird a whistling? Bird <laughs> whistling. Good job. Is that what you guessed? 
Fantastic. Okay, we're going to swap spots. Miss Rachel's going to give a turn to act, and now Hannah's going. Miss Hannah's going to guess. You are too. Okay. Make sure you're ready. Okay, ready, yes. set, go. <laughs> hmm. Oh, do you have an idea? I think I know what that one is. Okay, okay, let's work on the noun. Miss Hannah, do you have a guess on the noun? Do your noun again. Cat? Yes. Okay, and here's the verb, here's the action. Bowling? Yes, Yay. good job. <laughs> Okay, ladies swap. Here we go. Round number two. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Huh. Okay, you think you know what the noun is? There's the noun. Person, place, or thing. And then here's the action, the verb. All right, type your guess, type your guess. Ready, Miss Rachel, what are you thinking? So is it a book saying hello or waving? Yay, <laughs> a book waving, that's great. All right, ladies, go ahead and swap. Good job, is that what you guessed? They're doing a great job, very creative. All right, here we go. <laughs> Mixed up for sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. Here we go. Oh, ooh, that one's hard. Okay, there's her noun. Oh, okay, did you guess it? Or even if you just got one part, type what you guess. We'll give it one more try and then we'll let Miss Hannah guess. <laughs> All right, Miss Hannah, what do you think? Is it a driver melting? Close. Is it a, a car melting? A car melting. <laughs> That's been the case here in North Carolina where we are in Wilson. It's been hot this past week. <laughs> All right, here we are up to round number three. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> okay, ready? Go. Oh, yes, I would like some. Oh, that's weird. Okay, all right. If you get the first part, there's the noun. All right, and then what's the action word? Okay, did you guess? Go ahead. Okay, type it in, type it in. All right, Miss Rachel, what are we thinking? Ice cream smelling? Sniffing? Yes. Yay, <laughs> ice cream sniffing. <laughs> that, that's fun. Great, okay, here's the last bit of this round. Miss Rachel will pull her post-it notes. Let's see what she's got. Okay. All right, ready? Go. Pink. Wow, Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, all right, we'll try again. Here's the noun. Okay, that's our thing. Okay, all right, we'll do it one more time. Miss Hannah, how are you doing? I'm confused. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's just do the noun. Let's work this one out in parts. Here's the noun, okay? What do you guess, Miss Hannah? House. Mm -hmm. uh, Is there more to the noun? Church. Oh, church, yay. And then our verb. Running. <laughs> running. running, yay, good job. That one was tough, wasn't it? Oh. But it's true, it is a house because we call church the Lord's house, but that's right. Okay, here's our last round. What will it be, what will it be? Miss <laughs> Hannah said, hmm, uh-oh. Okay, ready? Get ready with your guesses. Miss Hannah, can you see her well? Can you do you just okay? the noun? Just the noun. Here we go. Okay. Now the verb. 
and then the verb. Okay. All right. Do you have a guess? This is your last one. Type your answer in. Okay. You ready? One more time, Miss Rachel. Noun. Verb. Miss Hannah. Is it a door jumping? It is Yay! a door jumping. <laughs> That's great. That was creative for sure, <laughs> ladies. You did a great job. Oh, you did a fantastic job too with your guesses. I'm so thankful that God made all of us creative like him. So we're going to take some time coming up now to worship him and to thank him for the way he made us. everybody up on your feet that's right because we've been waiting all week for this moment let's put our voices together and let's sing praise let it flow from your heart let's tell God that we want to live our lives for his glory miss Rachel will you join me let's sing he's got the whole world ready <laughs>
while we're studying the Bible, one of the main verses we're going to look at is Psalm 145, verse 3. Will you read it out loud with me? Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse 3. Okay, so let's put some hand motions to it, all right? And some actions. This first phrase, Lord, you are great, sing it. Lord, you are great. Got it? Lord, you are great. Okay, so the next line says, you are really worthy of praise. You are really worthy of praise. Let me see you do that. Ready? You are really worthy of praise. Good job. All right, so start at the beginning. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. Okay, here's the last bit. No one can completely, we'll do that part. No one can completely understand, point to your head, understand. No one can completely understand how great you are. How great you are. Got it? How great. How great you are. Are. No one can. Start at that part right there. Ready? No one can completely understand how great you are. Okay, so start at the beginning. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse 3. Now let's try it this time. Seeing just the letters on the screen and our actions to it, okay? Ready? We're going to put them together. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145.3. Take a look at it with the words on there. There it is again, a fantastic verse for us to remember about how great our God is. Good job, good job. So remember, you are God's creation. It's true, you are a child of God. So let's sing again, and this time let's use the song, Good, Good Father, to declare the truth of the words that we are God's children. Will you stand? Miss Rachel, will you join me? Let's sing together. Good, good father.
got a great idea on how to share the message with you from the Bible. So I think I know somebody who can help. Miss Rachel, are you there? I'm here. <laughs> Fantastic. Miss Rachel, I've got a fun way today for you to use your creativity. Um, can you use these pool noodles to help illustrate what I'm talking about today? Yes, ma'am. Great. All right. So let's get started. In the New Testament, we can find quite a few letters written by a man named Paul. Now, Paul wrote to believers in different churches. He wanted to encourage them as they tried to follow Jesus. Side note about Paul, he had not always been a Jesus follower. But once he did decide to put his faith in Jesus, oh, he made it his life's work to encourage others to believe too. In fact, he traveled all over to teach people and share with them what it meant to follow Jesus. Paul started a church in Ephesus. Ah, nice job. That's right, because the churches back then didn't really look like the churches we have now. In fact, they usually just met in homes, so that actually was very creative. After Paul started the church in Ephesus, he left. But later, he went back and stayed for several years. The believers in Ephesus were from different backgrounds. The one thing they had in common, though, was that they believed in Jesus, that he died on the cross, and that he came back to life. As Paul went around telling people about Jesus, he was so bold about it that he actually got in trouble with the Roman government. They didn't want people talking about Jesus, so Paul ended up in jail in Rome. But even though Paul had good reason to complain, he used his time creatively. He wrote letters to the churches he had started, including the church at Ephesus. He reminded them that God created us to do good things for others. Check out what he wrote, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It said, we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Oh, that's good stuff right there. But let's break it down a little bit more. Miss Rachel, can you keep helping me? Yes, I can. All right. Do you have anything there you can use? I do. Hmm. I wonder what she's got going on. A piece of paint, and these scissors, and um, what, Miss Rachel, what, what are you doing? You'll see. Okay, well. While Miss Rachel's working, let, let's dig into what Paul wrote. The first part of the verse, Ephesians 2, chapter 10, says this. We are God's creation. That's right. All throughout the Bible, we read that God not only created us, but he made us in his image. That means that God made us to be like him. And since God's creative, well, that means we can be creative too. And speaking of creative, let's check in on Miss Rachel. Hey, Miss Rachel, um, what are you creating now? Well, I use the pool noodles to make art. <laughs> oh, that's super creative indeed. Well, okay, we're going to get back to the verse. The next part of Ephesians 2.10 says, He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. When we put our trust in Jesus, it changes the way we see the world. Our relationship with Jesus is what helps us to see the needs around us. And it makes us want to help others. Oh, the table bit me. I've got <laughs> just the thing for that. Rachel, that's very creative and helpful. You saw I had 
a need and you help me with your creativity. Okay, let's finish up the words that Paul had. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This is the last part of the verse. It starts with now. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Now we can do good works? That means we can use our creativity to do good works that God planned for us to do. We can use the gifts that God gave us to help the people around us. Wait, I've got an idea. I'm looking forward to that. Rachel, you did use your creativity. Wow, that's bright, colorful, that's pretty. You're awesome. You knew just what I needed to help me feel better and to make my day. Oh, that's awesome. God created each of us. It's true. He planned out good works for each of us too. Good works that can encourage others like Miss Rachel did for me with this card and a way to show others about God's love. Miss Rachel, thank you for all you did to help me today, and thanks for showing all of us how we can use our creativity to show God's works. You're welcome. So here's something that we need to remember. The creativity that God gives us isn't just about art and music. No, God's designed you in a unique way. It's a way to love Him and love others. Well, that's what Paul meant by the words good works. He meant that we can use the unique way that God designed us to show love to other people. Well, for some people, those creative good works are things like drawing, songwriting, painting. With someone else, creativity may look totally different. It might be building a robot or designing cool apps and games or making people laugh or inventing 127 new uses for a pool noodle. <laughs> no matter how God made you creative, you can use that creativity to help others. Oh, it's true. But before you can use your creativity, you have to believe that you're creative. And I'm here to tell you, it's true. So here's what I want you to remember. God created you so you can be creative. Read that with me. God created you so you can be creative. Well, maybe you're thinking, okay, Miss Rhonda, that all sounds great, but I have no clue how I'm creative. Well, think about the things you like to do and things you're really good at. Or maybe ask your parent or a friend, what do they see in you? Ask God to show you new ways that you can use your creativity to help others around you. God not only made you creative, he wants you to use that creativity. You can trust God no matter what, and you can always ask him for help. Did you hear me? You can always ask God for help. So there's just so many ways to be creative. Don't judge your own creativity by what others do. Well, some of you might be very good at visual arts, while others of you are great at problem solving. And I imagine one of you is a creative communicator. You're good at helping others understand things. And probably someone else is good at planning parties or directing plays using your brothers and sisters. Well, the possibilities are endless. So let's take some time right now to thank God for making us creative. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for making us exactly who we are. We know that you don't make mistakes. We know that you had a plan to make us, and we thank you for that plan. We also know that you have a plan to gift us, 
to help us to do things in special ways. Maybe um, to paint or to draw or to sing or to be a good friend or to make others laugh or, well, there's so much, God, that you did because you're so creative. And because you're creative, we can be creative too. Because you love, we can learn how to love others too. Help us to use our gifts. Help us to use the way that you made us to love others and to show others about your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Great job listening. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of review over today's lesson and how we learned how we can be creative because that's how God made us. So long ago, before you were even born, God knew you and he loved you. He knew that he would create you and he knew that you would be the incredibly special person that you are. And one day, the time came for you to be born. All right, I'm going to ask you to act out growing from babies all the way to how old you are now. So get a little bit of room where you are. You're going to want to be able to get on the floor and get up and move around. So make sure you've got that room. Are you ready? All right. So when you were first born, one of the first things you learned to do was how to smile. Can you do that? No other movements, just a smile. Oh, what a pretty smile you have. Next, you probably learned how to roll from your back to your stomach and your stomach to your back. Sometimes this is called tummy time for babies. So can you get on the floor and pretend to be a baby and roll over and then roll back? And you can smile while you do it. Next, you want to hold your toes while you're lying on your back. You've just learned that you have toes. What are those little things down there? Now, you've got a rattle. Can you shake a rattle? Can you pretend to shake it? Kind of like a maraca. So you're laying down and you're shaking your rattle. Now, you've learned how to sit up. Look how big you are. Can you practice rolling from your back and sitting up? Or going from your side and sitting up? Isn't this fun, pretending to be a baby? Now, you know how to crawl. Can you crawl around your floor? Maybe you have pets that'll crawl with you, like a, a dog or a cat. They're probably wondering why you're on all fours. Do you remember how to crawl? Now, you've learned to speak. Can you say, Mama and Dada? These are probably some of your first words. Mama and Dada. Now, you can walk. You're practically all grown up and you're moving on your own two feet. Can you walk like, like somebody who's just learned how to walk maybe? Kind of wildly, oh, don't fall down. And you're getting stronger and now you can walk on your own and you don't even fall that much. <laughs> now you can throw a ball. Can you practice throwing a ball just a little bit like maybe a, a small child would do and maybe even pretending like you're shooting some hoops like when you've grown up? <laughs> Balls are an important part of being a kid. All right, now you can drink from a cup. When you were little, you drank from a bottle, but now you're big enough to drink from a cup without a lid. Do you have one nearby that you can drink out of, or you could just pretend? Mmm, refreshing. Finally, you learned how to run and jump and climb. Can you practice running in place? Now what about jumping up and down, up and down? You're so grown. Now, what are some things that you can do now? Can you show me something you do? Maybe you play soccer. Can you pretend like you're kicking the ball around? Or maybe you draw and you like to paint or play video games. Maybe you're almost to that next level. Maybe you like to read. I know I like to read or play with blocks like Legos. These things are so creative. Everything from learning how to smile and make your parents laugh to crawling all over the house and getting into trouble. Even reading and building with blocks now is so creative. God created you. You're his very special creation. And you know what? Long ago, God knew all about you. He knew when you'd smile, when you'd crawl, and when you'd take your first step. He also knew that you'd love to play video games, draw, or build. He not only knew that you'd love to do those things, he created you to do 
with him. Wow. God created you exactly the way you are. You are his special masterpiece. And you know what? God created you so you can be creative. You can use all the things you like to do to love God and show others what he's like. You can praise him by doing what you're good at and doing what you, would, what you like. So remember, God created you so you can be creative. Hey, thank you, Miss Hannah. That was awesome. Stay right there, Miss Hannah. So you know, because you've heard it from our story time and then from Miss Hannah's review with you, that we were all created uniquely. That means differently. Everybody has different gifts, different things we enjoy to do enjoy doing but God helps us to use those gifts to help others one of the ways that God gifted Miss Hannah is by giving her the ability to teach and work with students in fact this is the last time for a while that Miss Hannah's going to be with us in Shiloh Kids online because Miss Hannah's getting ready to move out of mine and Pastor Jeff's house <laughs> her home to another home and begin being a school teacher that's right because that's one of the ways that God gifted and gave gifts to Miss Hannah. So I'm super proud of that. I want to say thank you, Miss Hannah, for helping us with Shiloh Kids Online. I also want to say thank you to you. Thank you for spending time with me each week as we study more about God, as we learn more about how incredible His love is for us. Remember, you can always ask God for help. You can always talk to Him. He's with you. Have a great week.